Malachi chapter number three. Uh, you, you can ease up. You can ease up. We won't be going there today. And I know we won't be dealing with the tithes and offerings piece today, Malachi chapter three. I think it's only fitting that uh, we would end this year. We've been, those of you who have been here, know that we have spent uh, the entirety of, of the year of 2016, beginning in January, preaching from the book of Genesis, which is the first book in the Old Testament. It is the first book, as it were, in what is known as the Torah. It is uh, the first four or the first five uh, books of the Bible, first five books of the law where God is dealing with his people, setting precedents. Malachi, however, is, is the last book of the Old Testament. It is before what is known as the intertestamental period, where for 400 years after he says this, God won't speak to his people. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't go a day without hearing from God. So I could not imagine for the life of me spending 400 years without ever hearing God say anything. And I want to call our attention to this simply because that if it is the last thing that God said for an extended period, it must hold some relevance and importance to the plan of God for our lives. If God decides to shut up and never say anything for 400 years, then we must preserve the last thing he said because it is the last thing that God says that will sustain you through your seasons of wilderness and challenge. I really believe, and I'm going to, I'm going to read this and I'm going to get out the way, Mimi, but I, I really believe that it was the preceding word that Jesus spoke about in the wilderness that guided him through that time of 40 days of fasting uh, and when the enemy came to tempt him, because you do know the enemy will come to you when you're at your weakest point. Yeah. It, he never attacks your strengths. He attacks your weaknesses. And he attacks you at your weakest point. And so it was when Jesus was emaciated, when Jesus was famished, when Jesus was thirsty, uh, that the enemy comes to him and listen to what he says. Command the stones to be made bread, the enemy says to Jesus. And God said, Jesus said to him, man shall not live by bread alone. Y'all got it, but by every word that proceeds. Uh, it is the preceding word that led him through that season or the last word that he heard before he got into it. Mm -hmm. And so now when we deal with this, we must deal with, we must deal with the fact that this is God's last word to his people for 400 years. Ask somebody beside you, what's the last thing that God told you? Now you don't have to answer, but maybe that's why the, the next thing has not come to pass because the last thing has not yet been performed. <laughs> God. So I'm, I'm going to read this, Malachi 3. I want to begin reading at verse number 1. I'm going to read three verses, and I'm going to get out of here uh, so we can go home and warm up. Uh, <laughs> Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Can somebody say amen? amen? Before you're seated, I want you to just look at verse number three, and I want to look really at the first portion of that, and really one word in that first portion. It says, he will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will sit, somebody shout sit, sit. as a refiner of purifier of silver. Uh, I want to talk to you from the thought, the Savior who sits. 
the Savior who sits. I'm going to preach Jesus all month long. You'll, you'll get it in a minute. To tell your neighbor, I'm glad I have a Savior who sits. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The Savior who sits. The Savior who sits. Good morning, family. I once heard someone say that the most valuable people in life are the people who have the ministry gift of sitting. You will not find this gift specifically mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12 or in Romans chapter 12 where uh, the gifts of the Spirit are listed. You will not find it amongst the gifts of healing and miracles. You will not find it specifically mentioned uh, amongst the gifts of speaking in tongues and the interpretations of tongues. You will not find it listed in the ministry gifts of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, or the teacher. Even though this gift is implied, my brothers and my sisters, it is not specifically mentioned in the confines of the scriptures. But it is a powerful gift just the same. Elder Greer, people who possess this unusual gift have the uncanny ability to make loud statements without ever opening their mouth or uttering a word. Their mere presence is proof positive of the sentiments that they have towards you. The people who have the gift of sitting are people who don't have to say anything. Uh, they don't have to mumble anything. That you don't have to make a sound, but you just know by virtue of the fact that they are there, that they are with you in no matter whatever you're dealing with. My brothers and my sisters, many of you can identify with this truth because there are times in life when words are inadequate, times when advice is not welcomed, times, Troy, when explanation is not expedient, or times, Elder Corbett, when analysis is not appropriate. There are times when you're going through that you don't want to hear nobody say nothing. No matter what you say, when you share what you share with them, you're not sharing it with them that they might give you advice. So, sometimes you just want people to be a sounding board. Sometimes you just want somebody to be there to give you a listening ear and a shoulder to lean on. I, I believe firmly, my brothers and my sisters, that everything would have been all right with Job if his friends had not opened their mouth. Job did not have a problem with them sitting there for seven days and shaking their head. But it was when they opened their mouth and began to say to Job, Job, you had to do something to get in the position that you are. His life began to take a steady spiral downward. I love people who just know how to just sit. Just sit, just sit, just sit, just sit. I don't need no explanation. I don't need to give you one right now. I really don't even want your advice, and I don't need you to analyze me or what's going on. All I need you to do is just sit. There are times when I don't feel like answering questions or finding solutions. The only thing that will suffice is knowing that someone is unconditionally there. Uh, when my father transitioned in 2016, Sharon, you remember this, there were many well-wishers who sought to comfort us uh, with scriptures and prayers and uh, defenses of God's choice and subsequent action of choosing to take daddy long home. They would say things like, well, y'all loved him, but God loved him the best and would say stuff like God was going through the garden one day and decided uh, that he wanted to pick a flower and so he stopped and he Pick daddy long. You know, you remember it. Uh, oh, yes, you know, God is too wise to do wrong and too, too wise to make a mistake and too righteous to do wrong. And, and the truth of the matter is, my brothers and my sisters, while those efforts were greatly appreciated and much needed, my greatest comfort came not from the theologians, but from the boys and the girls in the hood who felt no need to defend God, but they simply came to be a support while we wept. And while we mourned, yeah, yeah, those were the people that really did me well, not the people who tried to theologize death 
you, you talking to the wrong one. You preaching to the choir. That's what I do for a living. If I don't do nothing else, I marry folk and then I bury them. I understand death. I understand that God is the controller and comptroller of all that is. I, I understand that he is the giver of life. I understand that the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. I understand they ought to be able to bless the name of the Lord, but right now I'm missing my daddy. And the truth of the matter is I don't really need to hear another sermon. I just need somebody who will just sit here with me and just be where I am. Somebody ought to shout, yeah. As a matter of fact, if you want to be like Jesus, say to me, where I am, there ye may be also. Somebody ought to shout, yes, Lord. Am I preaching to anybody in here besides me who just wants somebody to sit with you sometimes? I, I, I know what's wrong. I know how I got here. I know how messed up things are, but every once in a while, I just want somebody to say, I don't need to hear you right now. I just rather see you. Somebody ought to lift your hands and shout, yes, Lord. All of us have accounts of seasons of trials and tribulations and struggles and challenges and even failures when we have been blessed by people just sitting with us. Marcia, a few years ago, a good friend of mine was the subject of much public ridicule, scrutiny, and scandalization of his name. Uh, another mutual friend of ours and I decided that we were going to catch a flight just to sit with him and allow him to vent. Many who were on his bandwagon when he was up and who loved him in his success defected and distanced themselves from him in his season of conflict and controversy. But Sharita, the, uh, the, the invitation stopped and, and the engagements got canceled while he was going through what he was going through. Ah, yes, but now his light is shining brighter than it's ever shined before and he's the talk of the town again in a positive sense. Well, well I called him Thursday to encourage him uh, concerning the work that he was doing to advance the cause of Christ and the kingdom of God. And Mary Tyler, I, I asked him, I said, I said, my friend, uh, is there anything that I can do to assist you in your efforts uh, to do what you're doing? Uh, and when I asked him the question, uh, with a quivering voice, he responded, uh, Bru just continue to do as you've always done. Just keep being there. Oh Lord, there's something to be said about the ministry of being there. If you can just learn how to just be there and sit, God can do some miraculous and wonderful things and turn some things around for your good and for his glory. Don't look at me in that tone of voice because that's what Moses would have you to know. Moses said, God called me up on the top of Mount Sinai and gave me one instruction. Moses Moses, just sit and be there. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, sometimes you just got to learn how to sit and be there. Uh -huh. If you can just learn how to be there, I promise you that God will fix whatever needs to be fixed. If you can learn how to be there, God can change whatever needs to be changed. If you can be there, God can write whatever is wrong. Somebody ought to shout, just be there. Proverbs 17 and 17 declares that a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. So the presence of this kind of person in your life does three things. The, the first thing that the presence of the person who just knows how to come and sit does is that they show compassion because of your past. In other words, when people just come and sit with you, especially in your time of adversity, in your time of challenge, and in your time of trial, they are making an unspoken statement that says, I have compassion on you because of what you have been through and I don't know about you my brothers and my sisters y'all got it all together now I can see it on your face y'all ain't got no trouble y'all ain't never had none but every once in a while when I'm in a mess whether it's something that the enemy did to me or whether I did to myself I just need somebody to show me some compassion 
I'm speaking to anybody in here right now who can look back over your life and begin to give God praise for the people. Watch this. Who knew what happened in the past, knew how it happened, knew why it happened, but they just sat there and showed you some compassion. You ought to touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, those are the people that I love the most. The people who know the past but won't bring it up. The people who will acknowledge it without reminding me of it. The people who know the road that I traveled and know that I didn't get to where I was by any fluke. I'm just here. I'm just glad somebody's going to have some compassion on me. Somebody ought to shout, yes, Lord. So number one, when they come and just sit, they are going to show you compassion because of your past. But watch this. They will provide comfort for you in your present. In other words, if somebody just comes and sits with you, they acknowledge what you've been through. But watch this. They say, I love you enough to be with you right where you are. God deliver me from people who want to be with me when I'm out. God deliver me from people who want to be with me when I'm winning. I need somebody who can meet me right where I am, sit right where I'm sitting, and have a prophetic presence in my life. And if they don't ever open their mouth by virtue that they're with me, they're saying it's going to be all right. Am I talking to anybody in here who got at least one friend who comforts you in your presence? Am I talking to any? Look at her. She got her friend right beside her who's with you when it's rough and with you when it's tough. And by virtue of the fact that they're with you they're letting you know that it's me and you against the world baby because they understand that a two-fold cord uh, is not easily broken you ought to touch your neighbor and say neighbor I thank God for my ride or die I thank God for the one who's down with me like four flat tires I thank God for those who stand with me when everybody else leaves somebody ought to shout yes Lord One, they show compassion because of your past. Number two, they provide comfort in your presence. But I love this one, L. Degree. I love this one. I love this one. I love this minister, Surratt. Miss Willamay, I love this one. Uh, people who just sit with you, they hold you humbly accountable for your future. <laughs> okay, they, they, they tell you at some point, they say, all right, uh, we know what happened yesterday. We're not going to bring it up. Uh, we know where you are today as a result. You know, we hear what we're going to do to move on. But then watch this. They refuse, watch this, to let you stay in a place that is beneath where God has for you. <laughs> people who have the ministry gift of sitting they can handle your stuff but they refuse to let you remain in a place that is less than your best what does that have to do with Christmas season what does that have to do with today's message what does that have to do with the ministry of Christ I'm glad you asked because Jesus has been characterized as many things he's been characterized as the savior that he He's been characterized as the savior that delivers. He's been characterized as the savior that resurrects. He's, he's been characterized as the one who hears, the one who speaks, and the one who moves. But Malachi calls him in the text the savior that sits. Uh, now, now, but before I get into the message, I think I need to give you a little background on Malachi. I gave you some. I told y'all that it was the last book uh, in the Old Testament. It was the last time that God would speak to Israel for 400 years. Uh, but watch this. But, uh, I, I need y'all to understand that the problem in Malachi is that the people that God had chosen to be his own had gotten far away from him. Now, now I'm going to tell you why this bothers God. Because God told them in Numbers chapter 3, verse number 12 he says that the tribe of Levi in particular would be as the firstborn uh, in other words my brothers and my sisters you would have to go back uh, to the narrative of the book of Exodus when God decided to make good on his promise that after 430 years he would bring Israel out of bondage in Egypt and when God decided to bring them out of bondage remember what he does he sends a series of 10 plagues to totally obliterate, to totally wipe out the kingdom of Egypt and get his people 
out of bondage. Uh, notice what happens, Pam Hamilton, when he does that. The last plague is he sends a death angel through the camp of through the camp of the Egyptians and he says now I need y'all to kill of the lamb to kill, kill the lamb and, and take the blood and put it on the lintel and the doorpost I know it ain't Easter I ain't missed it I'm, I'm good uh, put it over the lintel and the doorpost and when the death angel comes over uh, wherever he sees the blood he's going to skip over that place and wherever he does not see the blood he is going to kill the firstborn of of all of the Egyptians. I'm, this is going to get good in a minute. In other words, what he says is this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kill every possibility of the potential of the enemy to ever reproduce and have power in your life. I'm going to talk whether y'all want me to or not. I could stop right there and we could have a shouting good time if y'all wasn't so cold. Because what he said was this. I know that y'all were wrong. I know that y'all been jacked up. Y'all know that y'all did me wrong. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow y'all to put the blood over your little and no matter how much you've messed up what I would do to others I'm not going to do to you. What would happen to others it won't happen. Is there anybody in here who has the testimony that when you look back over your life some stuff that happened to other folk should have happened to you but it didn't happen because of the blood somebody shout yes Lord I didn't mean to get so excited this morning but I feel my help coming and so here's what he says he says he says uh, I have chosen Levi <laughs> to be my first born in other words, I took the Egyptians firstborn, but I'm taking Levi as mine. And he says, all y'all owe me <laughs> is that y'all ought to serve me. Remember, I asked y'all this last week, what do you owe God? Uh, I didn't hear no answers. Here's the answer. Serve him. Touch your neighbor. Say, serve him. For all he's done for you, for every door he's opened for you, for every way he's made for you, for every enemy he's defeated for you, for all the stuff he got you out of, and for all the stuff he got you into that you don't even deserve to be into right now, for all the blessings that you're enjoying the least you can do is serve him somebody ought to shout let's serve him and so God declared in Numbers 3 and 12 that Levi would be as the firstborn but they had become corrupt and derelict in their duty uh, uh, when you read the book of Malachi it is flaming with indignation and indictments against not only the entire nation of Israel but in particular the priest those who were set aside by God to serve him those who were set aside by God to do his will and to do his bidding God is upset because they are oppressing their brothers God is upset because they're hooking up with who they shouldn't hook up with God is upset because they're not giving him what they ought to give him God is upset that they're taking something that doesn't belong to them God is upset because they're doing stuff that does not honor him but in spite of all of that he did not write them off <laughs> I love it LJ he says in the text somebody ought to shout in the text in the text he says listen I'm going to send my messenger <laughs> uh, first of all he says can, can, I, can I go a little deeper uh, give, me, give me 10 minutes I'm done uh, my battery about to run out so I can't preach long uh, uh, he, first thing he says he says I'm going to send a messenger before the messenger <laughs> and the messenger that comes before the messenger is going to tell you that the messenger is coming he talks about the ministry of John the Baptist. I ain't got time to preach it right now, but he's preparing the way for the one who would come. He says, now, after I send that messenger, I'm going to send the 
same messenger and when he comes watch this he ain't gonna say nothing that's what the text says the text says in verse 1 and 2 it says watch this that the master the messenger is gonna prepare the way before me and he and he's gonna suddenly come to his temple and he's gonna tell you prepare ye the way of the Lord uh, but he says watch this when he comes he's just gonna sit with y'all until y'all get it right y'all miss what I said isn't that what the text says I'm going to send my messenger and he will sit somebody ought to shout sit now please understand this before I move on that Levi is the third son of Jacob three is the number of covenant which means that when God makes a covenant with you not only does God have a responsibility to do what he said but you have a responsibility to do what you said the problem is there's a big difference between us and God God makes a promise and he keeps it we make promises and we renege don't look at me in that tone of voice I'll add more to it before I take some from it you know you've made some promises to God that you have reneged upon you know you've told God God if you get me out of this I'll never do that again you know you've said God if you you make a way for me I'll praise you I'll serve you with gladness don't look at me in that time I ain't even talking to your neighbor now or the one who should have been here I'm talking to you yep I'm talking to you you have made God so many promises and you have reneged on him but not one time can you say that God has reneged on you and look at what God says God says I understand that y'all ain't me I understand that I'm God and I can't lie y'all are y'all and you always lie I understand that I'm God and I can't change my mind y'all ain't me and you always change your mind so here's what I'm gonna do while you still unstable while you still flip flopping while you still with me today and not with me tomorrow I'm just gonna pull me up a chair and I'm gonna sit I wish I had somebody in here who could give God praise because he is the same who sits I, I know you delivered now but there's still some stuff that he's sitting in with you right now is there anybody besides me who can be true and tell the story and say I thank God that I got a savior who does not write me off who does not walk away from me who does not throw me away but he just pulls up his seat and he sits shouty yes Lord is a savior that sits and as we read the text I'm almost done I'm almost done I almost, only got 8% of my battery so I got to get out of here and so here is the word here is the word that he gives to the house of Israel in particular to a Levi to the tribe that he had chosen uh, to be his ministers his servants he says to them y'all uh, y'all acting jacked up right now <laughs> Uh-huh. You real twisted right now. Uh, uh, you have forgotten what it is you promised me that you would do. You have forgotten that when I delivered you, uh, I asked you, would you do it? And you said yes. He said, but I need you to understand that since we together, I ain't going nowhere. I'm just going sitting oh god this ain't in my message but i feel like i need to say something to some of y'all the reason you feel so agitated right now it ain't because of the demons that are bothering you some of us are agitated because god will sit and won't leave us alone is there anybody besides me who will get real and say he just won't leave me alone every time i turn around i see reminders that his hand is on me every time i turn around i see reminders that he's called me to do something for his team every time i turn around i see reminders of the fact that he's out he's with me he'll never leave me nor forsake me every time i turn around i see reminders that i'm anointed no matter how big of a fool i act every time i turn around i see signs that i'm chosen by him no matter how far i try to get away shout yes lord so 
thought, y'all, about to save the sit. I'm glad that he sits because when he sits, three things happen. Number one, when he sits, his presence burns up the evil in my life. <laughs> so I said it burns up the evil in my life. Uh, where did I get it from? I, I, I got it from the text. Uh, he makes the announcement. Watch what he does about the clock. He makes the announcement. He says, now I'm going to send the messenger before the messenger. And then when the messenger gets here, he's going to come like a thief in the night. Uh, it, it's going to be unexpected. He's just going to show up. He, 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 he's just going to be there. Voila. One day, he's he, he just uh, going to be there. He says, he says, now you said you looking for him. <laughs> the Lord whom you seek, he'll suddenly, somebody shout suddenly suddenly come to the temple and he's going to be the messenger of the covenant uh, and you say you delight in him and, and because he's coming but then he says who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears for he is like a refiner's fire mm, I love this I love this I, I love I, I love this I'm going to tell you why I love it uh, because refinement is the process watch this of burning away that, that which would decrease the value of that which is valuable. At the core, at the core uh, of all precious minerals uh, is that which makes it valuable. The problem is that it is encased and it is wrapped in dirt. <laughs> The reason you have to go mining for gold and, and mining for silver is because silver and gold are hidden in dirt. Mm, God. Oh, God. Uh, diamonds don't just come out. They don't grow on trees. Diamonds are encased in a black, gritty, hard substance called coal. And refinement is the process of burning away that which would decrease the value of that which is intrinsically valuable. And so notice what he says. He's going to sit as a refiner's fire. In other words, watch this. Silver and gold would go through several fires to get the, to the state of ultimate worth. Somebody ought to shout several fires. And in doing the process of refinement, the refiner, watch this, drops the metal, drops the substance into fire and steps back and looks at it. And when it comes through the fire, he examines it. And if he does not see the pure, valuable substance, he sends it through the fire again. He takes it out. He looks at it. If it does not bear the image of the pure, valuable substance, guess what? It goes back into the fire, goes through it. He takes it out and looks at it again. Watch this. It goes through the fire as many times as it needs to to become what it needs to be. Can I ask you a question? How many fires have you been through in your life? How many times have you had to go through a process that has burned some stuff away? Don't look at me in that tone of voice. And how many times have you found yourself after coming out of the fire, going back into the fire? I'm going to talk to me. Can I help y'all to understand what happens in this process? When the goes through or when the substance goes through he brings it out and does not immediately put it back in he has to let it cool off to see what's what and if it doesn't look like it's supposed to look after it's cooled off it goes back into the fire I have told somebody's story and I can pass you this mic and you can finish it because it looks like just as soon as you get with one trial and get a chance to cool off here you go back into another one 
who am I preaching to in here? Wave at me if I'm talking and tell me to go ahead and preach. God, it would be okay if after you took me out and you didn't see it, if you didn't let me cool off, you put me back in. But as soon as I get adjusted to my cooling off period, here I go back into the fire. Somebody in here is getting ready to change your attitude. You've been complaining about the fire, but God said, watch this, every time I put you in the fire, I'm burning something off that's decreasing your value. And whenever you have a problem sleeping at night, whenever your heart is heavy, just know this, that I'm the one who put you in the fire and I'm the one who can take you out. Shout yes, Lord. So he sits, watch this Venus. He sits. <laughs> he sits, he's the fire that burns up evil. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. Matter of fact, I'm getting ready to give somebody permission and ammunition to give the devil a black eye. Uh, uh, you may not be what you want to be. <laughs> Y'all know the rest of it. But because you've been through the fire, you are better than you've ever been before. And the reason you are better is, watch this, your fire may have run some people off, but it didn't run him off. You ought to touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, the reason I can survive the fire is because he's in it with me. Come in, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How did you survive the fiery furnace? They threw us in and thought it would kill us. But when they looked in, they saw the fourth man, and he helped us through the fire. Shout it out. Number one, number one, the Savior who sits with us, his presence, burns up the evil that would decrease our value. Oh, God. I, I love this. I love this. Watch this pumpkin. Uh, watch, watch this, baby. Uh, uh, uh. And not only, not only does his presence burn up the evil, Mother Lord, I love this, uh, his presence washes away the evidence. <laughs> Thomas, watch this, CJ, watch this, LJ. Mother Adams, good to see you. We're glad to have you back home. Not only does he sit as a refiner's fire, but he sits as the launderer's soap. <laughs> oh, God, I love this. I love it. Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, 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 watch this, I'm through keeping, watch, watch this, uh, watch what happens. When, when the precious gold, silver, precious metals go through the process of refinement, uh, and they finish the process, all of the dross uh, has been burned away. Uh, but, 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 but notice this, uh, there is still residue. Uh, uh, which means, watch this, uh, that after the cooling off process, there are still reminders, Stacy, uh, of, of where it was, what it had been in. <laughs> but the text says, he does not just burn away the evil, but he washes away the evidence. Because the next step uh, after the refiner's fire is the marketplace. And in the marketplace, there are experts, uh, 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 jewelers, uh, who examine the precious metal. And if there is a spot 
that is found on the item or the ornament. If there is a blemish on the article, then watch this. Uh, the gold or the silver uh, is considered to be defective. So what a smart refiner does is he lets it cool off just enough to see where the spots are. And before the spots become ossified, before they become firmly entrenched in the metal, he takes what is known as the fuller's soap and he puts water and soap together and he scrubs it so there will be no evidence of the place that it came from all right some of y'all might not know what i'm talking some of the mothers of the church help me mother killings can you help me to preach this mother clock mother adams can, can y'all help me to preach this please uh, 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 that's back in the day there was a soap known as lie soap <laughs> lie soap was so strong <laughs> Last up was so strong uh, that you take a scrub board, y'all remember it? And, and scrub the clothes on the board. And last soap could get out what tide can't get out. I wish I had a few witnesses in here. Uh, uh, they didn't have no bleach back in the day. You know you gotta have washing machine, washing powder and washing substance now. And then you got to put some bleach in it to get it out. Not back in the day, honey. All they needed was a bar of lye soap and a scrub board. And they scrub it until the stain broke up and there was no more sign. You ought to touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm so glad that he didn't just let me burn up but he burnt away everything that needed to be gone and then he sat there and he washed me look to your left and look to your right I can guarantee you one thing whoever you sitting beside don't look like what they came out of am I preaching to anybody in here who's glad that he sat with you long enough to wash you and the truth be known he ain't through washing us yet touch your neighbor say neighbor he ain't through washing me yet that's why I praise him that's why I serve him that's why I love him because he'll stay until all the stains are out somebody ought to shout yes Lord some of y'all ought to be shouting right now because your stains have caused you to lose some friends your stains have have caused your name to be hung on the signpost of evil. Your stain have caused some people to lie on you and ridicule you. But thanks be unto God. They watch this. They condemn you with suspicion. But God loves you with the evidence. Shout yes. I love the Savior who sits in Isha. I love him, Jonathan. I love him because, number one, his presence burns up the evil. <laughs> but his presence also washes away the evidence. <laughs> he sat there and watched me go through the fire. And now he's sitting there and washing away my stains. Somebody ought to shout, yes, Lord. Oh, God, I thought I was preaching to a real church in here. I thought I was preaching to somebody in here who's glad that he hadn't given up on you. I thought I was talking to somebody who's glad that he hadn't walked away from you. I thought I was preaching to a crowd of people who when you look back over your life, have the testimony that God had every reason to give up on me, but he's still here and he'll never Leave me nor forsake me. Shout yes. Number three. Number three. I love this. Watch this, Tiffany. Watch this, Rashonda. Uh, watch this. Number three. I'm done. Number three. I'm done. Uh, number three. Uh, Wanda, watch this, sweetheart. 
Um, his presence burns up the evil. His presence washes away the evidence. But number three, his presence restores us to our rightful place. Somebody ought to shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Listen to what the question is. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he's like a refiner's fire. And like a launderer's soap. He will purify the sons of Levi. And he will purge them as gold and silver. Uh, if you stop there, Troy, I feel my help coming, son. Uh, if, if you stop there, you may think that there's no hope for you. Uh, if it's all about burning and washing, burning and scrubbing, it may seem like it's all a lost cause. Uh, but the B portion <laughs> of the verse says something that I love. It says that the reason, Judy, that he's burning and the reason that he's washing is that they may offer the Lord an offering in righteousness. <laughs> that the reason he's burning and scrubbing is so that we can ultimately become who he has created us to be. Because the truth of the matter is that before your dysfunction, God had a design. <laughs> and the Bible declares that the first thing <clears throat> that God said about you was that you were created in his image and in his likeness. Uh, come here, Mr. Refiner. Help me close the lesson. Uh, how is it that you know uh, that silver is ready to go to the market? Uh, he said gold and silver are two different substances. Uh, uh, gold, when it has gone through the process, uh, has to first be dull. I learned this from my daddy's friend uh, who owns Brownlee Jewelers, God rest his soul. Uh, he said, uh, if you buy shiny gold, uh, you need to look at it twice. Because pure gold is not shiny. Uh, pure gold has a dull film that constitutes its value. But gold ain't like silver because the silver would come out of the fire and you would know that the silver was ready. Give me my key, son, I'm ready. You would know that the silver was ready uh, when the refiner would take the silver out of the fire, uh, take it out of the fuller's soap, wash it and look at it. And if he could see his reflection in the silver, uh, he knew that it was ready to go to the market. <laughs> I feel like preaching now. Uh, he said, if I can see myself, <laughs> Uh, in uh, the silver I know that I'm ready to get what it's worth and the Bible declares uh, through the John the one that we call the revelator he says beloved what manner of love is this that the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God and then he says for it does not yet appear what we shall be but before he says that but now are we 
the sons of God. Then he says it does not yet appear what we shall be. But when we see him, we shall be like him. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. I'm going to see Jesus in me before it's all over. And he's going to see himself in my reflection can I preach the way I feel it the Bible, the Bible, the Bible the Bible says in Revelation 1 and 6 and he made us to be a kingdom of priests to serve him to him be power to him be glory to him be dominion forever and ever amen touch your neighbor sing neighbor I'm glad that he sits with me to burn away everything that ain't like him I'm glad that he sits with me to wash away the evidence of my yesterday and my past but I'm glad that he restores me to my rightful place can I go high I feel my help coming now I'm glad I serve a savior who sits with me I've had many to walk away but he stayed I've had many to write me off but he stayed I've had many to think that it was over but he stayed is there anybody here who can lift your hands and think about your life and say Lord I thank you for sitting with me thank you Lord for sitting in my mess thank you Lord for sitting with me when I acted like I lost my mind thank you Lord for sitting with me when it looked like I was a wretch undone thank you Lord for sitting with me when I decided to go my own way can I go high thank you Lord for sitting with me when I went left when I should have gone right thank you Lord for sitting with me when I willfully sinned and going astray you were there all the time can I go high is there anybody here who knows what it feels like to have God be by your side when everybody else has walked away I heard said I heard David said when my father and my mother they forsake me then the Lord will pick me up shout yes shout yes can I go high I feel like lifting him I thank God that I have a savior who sits until I'm all right. Say yes. Say yes. There's an old song that says, What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sin and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Grab your neighbor and say, Neighbor, he can handle it and he'll sit until your deliverance, your breakthrough, your blessing manifests. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yes. Hallelujah. Grab one more neighbor and say, neighbor, God told me to tell.
tell you, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, you are who he said you are. You can do what he said you can do. You can have what he said you can have. sitting are you glad that he sits are you glad that he's there are you glad that he'll never leave you nor forsake you shout it out shout it out shout it out shout it out praise ain't for everybody but everybody in here who know that people have written you off but God has still counted you in on the count of three you need to praise God like you're already blessed like you're already delivered one two one two three come on I know there are at least three of you that the doctor gave up on, told you there was nothing he could do, sent you home with some medicine, and told you to make yourself comfortable. But look at you. That was six years ago, and you're still here, and you're better than you've ever been. On the count of three, you ought to praise him. Huh? One, two, one, two, three, come on. more of you that they said you'd never be nothing they looked at your past they looked at what you had been through they looked at everything that had happened and they said there was no way that you couldn't make it but look at you now you're here and you're doing just fine give him glory one two three hey! the rest of y'all i know there's some of you in here that the devil was in your ear telling you that it was over telling you that you wouldn't amount to anything telling you that you'd never get out of what you're in but look at you not only are you out but you're better than you've ever been somebody shout
this is for the rest of y'all they told you that you'd never be anything without them they told you if they left you that your life would be over but you dropped them and look at you now somebody give them glory He's, he's sitting with you now. I said he's sitting with you now. Lift those hands in worship, please. He's sitting with you now. Right now, wherever you are, whatever you're going through, Whatever the process is, it's intended to make you better. That's why he comes. I love it. I love the fact that Sasha, the first time we see him, he's a helpless infant. They sit him in a manger. And in the months, in the midst of the stench of animal flesh, and the aroma of animal refuse, the baby Jesus sits. <laughs> if nobody takes him out, he doesn't get out. You'll catch that later. If Mary and Joseph don't pick him up and transport him, he stays right there in the midst of the animal stench. And in the scent and in the aroma of defecation and urine, he stays there. Y'all do know that animals sleep where they eat and they relieve themselves where they sleep. <laughs> and he's there. There is no mess that's going to make him leave you. Now, some of you got closer to him because of the sickness <laughs> others of you got closer to him because of the trouble in your marriage and in your relationship and not every sickness was an attack of the enemy some sickness was because you didn't take care of your health and every relationship didn't break up or ain't in trouble because of them But he just, through the tears, through all of the excuses, he just sits. Oh, Elder Colbert, I used to be afraid to read this text. I'm going to tell you why. Because I read over something that I just saw this last time. He says, yeah, I'm dealing with y'all. But I'm sitting until you get it right. As long as it takes, I'm here. Some of you need to understand this. You've had multiple failures and or multiple attacks. See, here's what I've learned. That the pain of self 
uh, destruction and satanic destruction feels a whole lot alike. <laughs> when you in pain, you in pain. <sighs> y'all missing this. Some of y'all ain't been hurt bad enough yet. Because there is a pain That hurt so bad. That the issue ain't if it's your fault or their fault. The issue is just that you hurt me. Am I talking to anybody here besides me? <sighs> this last thing, ain't, no, ain't none of your business what it is. But this last thing. Took me for a ride. <laughs> Got to a place that I thought I would never be. Tried to get help from whoever would help me. You know what the Lord said? I'm sitting with you. <laughs> I'm with you. You crying about who don't understand you? Who can't feel you? Uh-oh. Who don't? God have mercy. Who has left you? Who chose somebody else over you? Even when the somebody else was somebody you introduced them to? You crying about that? I've never left you. Neither have I forsaken you. I'm sitting here all the time. This message is for somebody in this house. We're going to have old timey altar prayer. If this message spoke to you and it just gave you a sense of, I'm glad that he's the savior that sits. If, if this message has encouraged you, watch this, inspired you to praise about what you used to complain about. Come to the altar, please.